Today I've got something a little bit different for you. I am not doing a video on a specific model, but on a feature. This is the Mercedes-Benz Drive Pilot. It is a level three autonomous system, and it has actually been approved for use in two of the United States. In case you're not familiar, the SAE have a scale for autonomous driving systems that all manufacturers use. Levels zero through two are for instances where you are driving. Zero includes features such as automatic emergency braking and blind spot warning, features found standard on most modern vehicles. Level one includes adaptive cruise control or lane centering assist, not both. Level two includes them both as well as some lane change assist functionality. Level three is what we're testing here. Now levels three through five do not require the driver to have their hands on the steering wheel or their feet on the pedals. But level three is conditional and that means that all of the conditions have to be right in order for me to be able to drive like this. So it may require me to take over driving if for some reason one of these conditions is not met. Mercedes-Benz has been innovating and pushing the autonomous envelope for a while, and they've definitely gotten a head start over some other automakers with DrivePilot now being approved. But GM have been hard at work too with Super Cruise, Blue Cruise comes to us courtesy of Ford, and Tesla of course has their <coughs> self-driving mode, even though it's technically not self-driving. Drive Pilot for Mercedes has already been approved for use in Nevada. Now it is approved to be used in California and it has already been approved internationally. You guys, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty impressed. Drive Pilot uses the sensors and cameras around the vehicle that give you the rear and surround camera views, but they also use additional ones and add LiDAR to operate the system. And this isn't just normal GPS, folks. This is a high precision system that can accurately determine the position of a vehicle within inches. I kind of need this for my phone and my keys. There are redundancies and backups for both steering and braking systems, just to be sure that everything's working as it should be. So it's not like right out of the gate, you're gonna be able to just sort of press a button and your car is gonna go without you doing anything. You do have to be on a pre-approved road, something that's already kind of in the system. And then once you get on that road, the car is going to have to sort of assess what's going on around it as far as conditions, as far as the road, do you have a vehicle in front of you? And then it will tell you if and when it is ready to engage the system. Right now, Drive Pilot is restricted to 40 miles an hour or slower, so the likelihood is, is that you are going to be in commuter traffic, and as someone who lives in Los Angeles, I know there is plenty of that here. The system can get the car going up to 80 miles an hour, but that's not possible yet. When it's been approved for use, then that will be installed with an over-the-air update. So the control buttons are here on the steering wheel and these lights come on when the system is ready to be activated. There's also sort of a circle A around the car in front of you and then basically it's these teal lights that light up to let you know that the system is ready to go. So it's basically like an adaptive cruise control and it distances itself with the car in front of you only you don't have to use your hands and you don't have to use your feet and your eyes don't even have to be on the road. Like right now I'm driving. I'm not driving, I'm riding. Conditions on the road, including the route, traffic, road signs, everything is accounted for. Even unexpected things like nice folks who cut you off. There are lights on the exterior of the car, teal, turquoise, whatever you prefer, that will indicate someone is using the level three system so other drivers don't freak out on you. And more importantly, law enforcement won't pull you over. Those lights are not legal yet, but Mercedes-Benz is working with local law enforcement and government agencies to make it happen. So I'm not gonna lie, initially when I heard about this whole drive program, I was a little freaked out. There's some trepidation that goes on here. But a couple of things that I'm noticing. First of all, I'm staying really, really centered in the lane. I mean, it's like perfectly, I'm sure 
if we got a ruler out, the distance on the right would be sort of the same as the distance on the left. That's so beautifully German and I love that. The other thing that I'm noticing is it's, it's really quite smooth. I have not been going very fast, that's thanks to the ridiculous traffic in Los Angeles right now, but as far as any adjustments that it's making to the right or to the left, or when it's braking, depending on the car in front of me, or even if a car kind of jumps in in front of me, the system is incredibly smooth. I don't feel like it's some drive instructor who's coming over here and yanking on the steering wheel. So far, I'm going to say that it's a super weird feeling, but I feel like I could really get used to this. And look, I can watch a video This is weird. I can watch my own video on YouTube about the EQE SUV <laughs> that I did for Mercedes. You guys, this is weird, but I can tell you, um, I could get used to this. Oh, and then there's the little Mercedes, the S-Class pillow. <laughs> this is amazing. It even moves over a little bit to accommodate for motorcycles lane splitting, which is legal in California. So it will have you take over if there is something going on that, oh, we'll take a like here. That's making me do this. Okay, now what do I have to press the buttons? Okay, I'm not sure why it actually turned off because everything seems like the conditions had still been the same. We are going under an overpass, so that might be why. But the first thing it does is it sort of flips the lights here. It beeps on the uh, display. And then after a couple of seconds, if I'm not paying attention to what's going on there, it will tug on the seat belt. And I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe that alert just got a little bit louder and a little bit louder and a little bit louder. It basically wants you to just wake the heck up and pay attention. Oh, and now I can engage it again. And if none of those systems actually work to wake you up or to get you to take control, then the car will actually slow down um, at a very safe pace. It will stop completely. It will turn the hazard lights on. It will call emergency services and it will unlock the doors so that some kind of emergency services people can come and check and make sure that you are okay. So if you have just fallen asleep and you are a very heavy sleeper, you better hope that uh, that's not happening to you because you're gonna probably annoy a lot of people if you're just taking a snooze. Drive Pilot only works when conditions are ideal. So not in the rain or even when the streets are wet. It's got sensors on the windshield and the front of the car so it knows when it's raining and then another sensor behind the front tires that can detect wet roads. All of those scenarios deactivate the system. Also, it doesn't work in twilight or at night. If for some reason you do get in an accident while you are using DrivePilot, Mercedes will assume responsibility. However, there's a little black box in here, just like in an airplane, and they will know if it was driver error or if it was actually something that did not function properly with the system. So. If you do get in an accident and you're gonna blame them, you better make sure that you know what you're talking about or you got a really good lawyer. The hardware for DrivePilot will be installed in a limited number of EQS and S-Class sedans initially. To initiate the system, customers will pay a subscription fee of $2,500. That's per year. However, Mercedes-Benz is coming out with a subscription-based sales model, so there may be different options in the future. The future is here and guys, I'm driving with no hands. You know what? It was a little scary at first, but I'm totally here for it. And so is Mercedes Benz. Listen, so much is changing so quickly now, but you want to know something? It's a little bit more exciting than it is scary. So drive pilot. We're going to have a lot more to talk about on this one. Stay tuned. I don't know what to do with my hands. That is the biggest thing. I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm just Italian now. <laughs> Maybe I can read a book. Could I read a book? Oh my gosh. I'm reading a book. <laughs>